Dan Hubbard, and thanks for checking out My Pit Online. You know, I started my career, um, I was a musician. I, I, I grew up uh, playing guitar. My older brother wanted to play guitar, and I was like 11 years old and said, I want to play guitar too. You know, it was one of those deals. And um, I, I, I learned how to play, uh, took lessons alongside my brother with this teacher in Connecticut, and then I really developed a passion for it probably when I was like, around 15 or 16 years old, and then I really started to play and practice every day and got pretty decent at the guitar. Um, and then I, and then when I realized that's what I wanted to do with my life, I moved to LA. I went to a music school here, um, and just started gigging, playing in bands. I built a recording studio with a friend of mine. I learned how to become an engineer, uh, and I, uh, um, you know, just constantly was recording bands and playing on their demos and doing all kinds of fun stuff like that. But then I, um, you know, that life tends to wear on you when you can't make rent or you're going from a car. I actually went one point, one point my dad gave me a car. I went from the car to a beat up truck to a bicycle in a matter of about four months because I kept needing to sell one to make rent, you know. And so uh, I, I eventually decided that I wanted to really learn more about the business that I was in um, because I was always on the creative side and I, and I felt helpless. And so I started interning for a promotion company, and the company is called Howard Rosen Promotion. And I was—I had no idea what pr promotion was. I had no idea what it was about. I just went in. I saw the gold records on the wall, and I was kind of, you know, taken by the whole thing. And uh, ultimately, I ended up, you know, learning about it, calling radio stations, trying to get records played, and uh, it was really exciting. And um, I loved it. I loved like talking people into doing stuff they didn't want to do. I loved the, that I was doing that on behalf of artists who were just starting out and didn't have anything going for them, and that was really cool. Um, and at the end of the day, uh, that job turned into I became a local guy for Columbia Records. I spent four years at Columbia Records, which was great. It was an amazing learning experience as far as like. You know, me getting what I went into it for, like learning about the record business, I learned it from top to bottom. Uh, and then in 1998, I had just an amazing opportunity. Um, I had a relationship with a guy named Bob Cavallo, who is now the chairman of, of Disney Music, and he got that job in 98, and he came to me and asked me if I wanted to be the head of promotion, which is... You know, it was a it was a really scary thing, because I was a local guy, had no national experience, but you know, you just don't turn down that kind of an offer. And I went into it and, you know, quite frankly, made a lot of mistakes, um, but was fortunate enough to have some successes while I was there um, that I was able to, you know, get some other really good jobs out of it. I ended up going to Epic after that, and I ran a promotion for them for a minute. Um, things didn't work out, uh, but learned a ton from just being in that system again. It was going back home to Sony but at a different capacity and working in New York and just a different breed of people. So I learned a lot there. Uh, and then I came back to L.A. and I, I did um, a few years at Capitol Records as head of promotion. That ended in, in 2004. And once again, you know, just we had a ton of success. It was a really good learning experience for me. Um, and But I, after that was over, um, I really felt the business had, you know, even at Sony, when I was when I went to Epic, it was during the whole Napster time, you know, and the downloading had just was just corroding and eroding the the fun. To be honest with you, it was from when I got into the business in the late '80s to you know the early 2000s, it was just kind of night and day. And you know, there's still a good living to be made there, but it just the business has changed, and um, you know, it, it wasn't. I didn't want to go back for another tour of duty. If I could have, I don't know if I actually would have. So it was at that time that I kind of started to look at other options. And um, I had a lot of relationships. Obviously, when you live in L.A., you end up knowing film people just through osmosis, you know, from parties and clubs and, you know, meetings. And um, I ended up hooking up with this production company called Oddlot, and I do all of their music supervision. I have for a few years now. Um, and I really didn't know what I was doing. The first job I got, I, I got a slate of horror movies that they were working on. It was three films. 
Um, this the music budget was, I think, twenty five thousand dollars per film. Um, that was what I had for licenses and you know for sync and masters. And um, it, it, mind you, I didn't know what a sync and master was. I mean, I knew, but I didn't know anything, how to do it, who to talk to. Um, so I had to relearn the music business for a second time, but a whole other side of it, because getting records on the radio is another life compared to you know get, negotiating with a publisher, um, you know, negotiating with a record company for their master, um, dealing with unsigned artists, explaining to, I was finding myself having to explain to unsigned artists what sync rights were when I was still fuzzy on them. You know, it was, it was kind of funny. Um, but it was a great crash course and it was kind of like, like everything else in my career in the music business, which was, you know, getting dropped into the ocean and swimming as fast as you can and try to learn and figure it out. And, and now that I, I feel like I'm over that hump and the movies I'm working on now are, you know, they're $50 million movies, they're bigger budget films with big stars and a lot of riding on them and I feel really comfortable, you know, in, in that world. So, so now, I mean, I, you know, my, my career arc has, has been pretty wide, but I also feel like the experiences I gained from running a promotion department and, um, you know, making all the mistakes you could possibly make uh, has equipped me to be a pretty decent music supervisor and, and work with a lot of different personalities because you're balancing the director and the producer and the, the assistant director and the editor and there's so many little uh, variables in there that had I not had my prior experience I, I might not be able to handle it. I tend to uh, I think I'm a, I tend to keep myself off the big radar screen of like every artist in the world knowing where I live and my address and where how to get you know how to get stuff to me and by the way not for any reason of uh, that I don't want that or that I you know don't think they're good enough but just it's just because I'm just not there yet probably but the point uh, that you're making is a good one and I, I, I was actually in Nashville last year there's a big uh, music uh, supervisor seminar that's put on and I met a lot of really great artists down there who have be actually become friends you know and you, you, we, you hang out with them for a weekend you write songs with them it's all part of like the fun for this is almost like a music supervisor band camp kind of thing uh, and I you know that's me. I mean, I'm I'm a I'm an unsigned artist at the end of the day. You know, like I grew up wanting that for myself. I wanted to write songs and be a musician. So I have a lot of empathy for for artists. And you know, the only the only difference is that, and I know both sides because I was that. But you know, but I also was an executive for a long time. And the difference is that, like, when you're an artist, you you just you think you're right and the music is right and it absolutely should be placed and how could you not place my music and can't you just find a spot for it and um, you, you're coming from a place of desperation sometimes and I understand that because you want your career to go um, but on the flip side of that you know my job is not to just find a place for your song my job is to find the song for the place you know and so 